so I hope you guys don't mind. Um, so, all right, we got the second Galaxy version patch notes here, 1.4. I'm here with my group. They might add some cool uh, stuff they want to talk about, but yeah, let's dive right in. So the first thing I want to look at, it says here, the combat changes. You can now press and hold your finger down in space to directly target ships. Uh, that's insane because it was really hard for us to target ships before. Uh, especially like during big PvP wars, we would have to, you know, individually look for something. Now we can, like, if we see who the enemy is healing, we could just put our finger on it and target. So that's pretty uh, cool. And when we put your fingers over multiple ships, an overview will pop up and it'll show us all the targeted ships. So that's awesome. Uh, let's see, they got general stuff here. Flight. Oh, overview settings. A ship type page has been added in the overview settings. You will now be able to display or hide certain ship types in the overview. And that's huge because now let's say we're running an op and we're a big bad battleship and we only want to target other big bad battleships. We can do that. We don't have to worry about uh, or like if we're a frigate and we only want to attack frigates, we can choose who we want to attack and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. Light and navigation, orbiting. Orbiting distance can now be set manually by pressing the orbiting button and dragging it horizontally. So it looks like now we can choose our own distance, which was a big issue. It even popped up today on our SAV, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, but now we can choose the distance that we want to manually orbit these. Uh, and your ship's actual landing point, you will now appear at a random location on a sphere 23 kilometers away from the gate. That's interesting. I don't know how that will turn out yet. The interaction distance between which you can pass through stargates has been reduced from 15 to 10 kilometers. Okay. Uh, that means you have to get closer to the stargates to interact with them. So that's pretty cool. A uh, good thing. Ooh. Crossing through a stargate will no longer force the chat interference to close, but will still under close other interference and inter inferences. Um, that's interesting i it's not what i hoped actually there i was hoping that they would make it so we can look at the map and the sob screen while we are uh going through warps but who knows maybe that'll be something later in these notes uh navigation the navigation function has been enhanced i gotta say that map thing's very disturbing yeah yeah it is it's it's, it's awful uh so hopefully they'll, that'll be one of the things that they're looking at or maybe it'll be in this list later uh, but they are it looks it looks like they're doing a lot of crazy stuff here um navigation button has been enhanced uh the return to base function located in the upper left hand corner has been replaced with quick nav function by using quick nav you can establish routes to your base and your corporation star systems with a single tap so uh, quick nav automatically records the last three star systems you set a course for and allows you to return to them with optimized convenience. But I wonder if that will include jump gates or not. Uh, optimized star map region borders areas outside the original realm will be active. Well, it looks like now we're starting to get a like a, um, a function where we can save our three major spots we go to most and uh, we can quick jump. Actually, oh, well, that'll be nice to have a couple of places you can mark as favorites and quick yes, jump to. Yes, that's, that's really essential in a, in a modern MMO. Yeah, yeah, it's a favorite function. Looking for the name for one of those. <laughs> I couldn't think of it. Uh, attribute balancing, energy nullification devices. Oh, here we go. So this is the big thing, the big nerf to energy null. Energy nullification devices are now being divided into three types, small, medium, and large, according to their effect and energy consumption. General energy nullification devices will automatically be replaced to medium after the update, and the automatic replacement of these devices will not affect trading post data or the base cost of medium energy nullification devices. Uh, 
the group energy nullification device cooldown bonus of Deverish, and its tier 2, tier 3 derivatives will remain unchanged, and the Basilisk and their derivatives have been modified so they can now be equipped with medium energy nullification devices. Okay. Looks like it's just trying to, because those were the energy draining uh, chips. Debuff devices. This is big. This is what we were talking about earlier. This is where we gotta listen close because this is gonna affect PvP group based combat as we know it. The effect all buff debuff devices, so buffing and debuff devices that provide percentage based, percentage based effects will no longer stack and only one can be in effect. However, group buff slash debuff effects can still be ta stacked with single target effects of the same type. Unstackable buff debuff effects will overwrite each other according to their value with higher level effects replacing lower level effects. So if I'm bringing an AOE buff to range that's increasing our range by 23% and then Tri brings a buff that buffs our stuff by 40% my buff will go away and his 43% will take precedence and they won't stack. Yeah, that's... I, I, I'm okay stacking. It just means mm -hmm. that it's able to take three 10 percenters, you take one 30 percenter. Yeah. Uh, so now uh, clans, corpse alliances have to get organized with who's bringing what now, you know what I'm saying? And now not everyone can bring AOE nullification that's going to drain. I think it will of, of change what, what, a, what a frigate that support frigate would bring, right? I mean, yeah, so yeah. now instead of bringing all shields, for uh, shields and so stack with other people's shields, so why bring it? Exactly. Right? Beast. Yes. I also think it's going to diversify what corpse can do now because everyone's going to be able to bring in more stuff to for example boost uh damage of a particular kind or even boost uh defense to a particular kind of damage absolutely from my perspective being a pvp tank i don't have to worry so much about one ship being able to knock out all my stuff because it can't stack itself right yeah yeah so now i can i can subsequently go ahead and put like a an a warp nullifier on my tank instead of three shield generators you yeah. know yeah um and that's that's really interesting too because i know the big meta was you know and I, you see a lot of these videos that you know eden posts in their uh their big fleet ops a lot of them were running like shield shield buffs that were stacking and they were running elementary nullification that were stacking on top of each other so this is going to change the meta and diversify everything. Absolutely. There's something that changes on my tank right away. I can't, I have a hundred percent regeneration because of my batteries on my, yeah. well, that won't work anymore. I'm going to lose well, that. Are the, the single target though, right? Are those only affected? My, it, it's components. Yeah. It's still stacking though. Huh. Yes. We'll have to find out. I don't yeah, know so if we can read the total. Percentage. I'm going to do some testing on that for future reference. Uh, but here, I feel like um, try because you have a lot of tier two and tier three things. Uh, the shield, armor, energy, super device, and tactical component values of tier two and tier three ships have been increased overall. The shield is of shield of, of two and tier three and two and three have been increased higher and higher tech ships will have specialized resistance advantages. So your tier three Bastion and Cheetah, those are going to be buffed. That's nice to know. I'm yeah. pretty comfortable in my tier two ship already. Some instances where I thought that it would, it would act better being. It, it gets better. The damage, cooldown, power consumption, magazine capacity value of your weapon have also been increased the oh well, now that makes sense i mean if you think about how much of a load we can carry around with us why yeah yeah and room for ammo, ammo chambers ammo. right yeah. i mean come on right. there's plenty of room for it like a you know to carry in one shot carry five thousand 
units and versus 2,500 or whatever also it is. Also, the tier 2 and tier 3, your range, single target, and group shielding and energy recharge devices has Overall improvements have been made to shield and energy extender component values of the tier 2 and tier 3 ships. So basically, the tier 2 and tier 3 ships have gotten buffed a lot. So it's, it's um, you know, it's it's giving people an incentive because a lot of people were sticking with greys. I was yep. probably sticking with greys, uh, but now it's making us, uh, you know. Yeah, I'll be ahead of the game now. Oh, yeah, you will be. Way ahead of the game. I've already got I, was, tier three I, left, I left my research at tier one for my tier two and tier three ships. Ooh, you got a long way to go, man. Yeah, you know, I was. I was <laughs> no you know way. how much it cost me to get up to tier three on my uh, research? Oh my I'm god, imagine. dude! Oh, ah, excuse my language. Capital I'm ships, uh, the armor, shield, and shield resistances, and the damage values, and the weapon and device values of. Now those things are gonna be harder to take down and they're gonna hit harder and when they leave the shipyard their super device energy will now be full by default after warp boost right oh, away is it then warp and it'll fill up during the warp yep so those things are gonna be ready to go as soon as they're you... uh pve uh player level so this is for new players uh there's gonna be no cap until you hit level 30. So that means if, if someone starts, they could get to level 30 and without having to hit that. It's so let new players catch up fast. Resistance changes, uh, tier two, tier three, hostile enemies. Uh, their resistances is gonna match the players. Um, just uh, nothing crazy here I'm reading. Um, uh, oh, is that t are they when I'm wondering? It's just saying that like uh, NPCs are going to be matching, uh, you know, the NPCs of nations and whatnot. And it's, I don't really see anything crazy for that. But I am looking at the challenge difficulties here, uh, and it's saying to accommodate the attribute increase made to tier two and tier three ships, the difficulty of a lot of things are going to increase. So they're saying if a, a system is level 38 or above for the star system, that's going to be a lot harder. The corporation events are going to be harder. Reputations that are trusted and above are going to be harder. And wormholes that are alarming and above are going to be harder. And so are the pilot missions uh, that are all of those are going to be harder. But at the same time, it looks like rewards are going to be increased. They're increasing reputation quest rewards. Uh, they're increasing the final battle reward. That's from infected stages. I know I didn't even do infected stages because the rewards weren't that good. Now I might have to if, if these infected stages are giving. Well, it's my understanding that they will affect our production of our corporate assets. It's, As there's much more of a re reason to yeah. do it. Yeah, I think that's mentioned later. I'm going to get to that. Yeah, they're gonna make the three percent drop in production of our resource. Mm. Um, it says they're adding photography quests to available reputation type quests. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, we're gonna have to with that. I don't know. Uh, okay, why not? Uh, exploration and reputation quests can now reduce your criminal level. Okay, it's good for Nighthawk. I guess who always gets into trouble with the police. <laughs> now remember that. <laughs> uh, PVP, spatial rejection, increased spatial rejection trigger volume uh, for sovereignty wars. Okay, well here we go. Yeah, that was that's, that's pretty funny. I got my guns going, so I'm gonna mute. Okay, great. Um, so here's what's interesting though. Uh, the limit on the number of players allowed in the star system where sovereignty war is wars are has been increased to 500. So when more than 500 players are in the war zone, the star system will become inaccessible. So now it looks like they're kind of starting to deviate away from that spatial rejection thing. And they're gonna have a 500 limit uh, amount and there's these special rules that they're gonna follow to see who gets kicked out first and whatnot. So capital ships and ships 
are going to be the least likely to be kicked out and they'll be followed from like the biggest fat. Well, priority setting that they mentioned in the really good that now it can hold at least up to 500 players um, because that was ridiculous when we were getting kicked our system sovereignty hundreds of sovereignty systems correspond to ssh i had to let my guns finish on that on the aspect they're kind of backtracking on they're better than they were because it was 100 you know you'd hit 100 and they'd start force warping you right yeah, yep yep for the for the but, spatial diff yeah um they they touted a thousand so now they've split that in half with 500 but it sounded to me like there was still some spatial rejection going on when you hit the 400 mark and they'd push you out and then at that yeah, rate, that, that's maybe what it was maybe yeah, they they changed it from four hundred to five hundred. And it's now. each side. It's not it, there, so it's two hundred per side. So okay, could be there I'll could be some ramifications now. to that when it, if yeah. it comes to large scale combat. It, 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 there will be some tactical, you know, uh, ramifications is what I'm mm. getting at. In other words, if you come in with a hundred. You, and they're all tier two ships you're not gonna and the other team has 200 well you're more likely to stay and the, the odds will change and it, it could really it could be yeah, a I wanted, they, they made a separate post on reddit like regarding the rules on that i'll, I'll take a look at that at like uh after. yeah that's another interesting thing i haven't seen spatial rejection lately though especially when we've been doing these uh, ops I haven't seen it for a while at least so so it looks like that's getting better um, well that may be but it, oh, my performance oh, took a hit when we had 80 or 70 or whatever it was in that last stop I, I was still taking a hit performance wise yeah or was it okay yeah so moving on there's those new uh, hundred sovereignty hundreds of sovereignty systems are open Average war is 41 and above has, has increased. Yep. Um, Sovereignty's claiming zone warp entry point will now be further away. 60 kilometers away from the claiming facility. Oh, so good because we might not have to do that big old walk of shame. Remember that like you're not 250 meters out. Um, oh, yeah. that if, if we could get uh, overcome that limitation, that would be great. If that's yeah. what they're indeed pointing yeah, at. We'll be 60 meters away from the claiming facility, so we won't jump right on it. But maybe now we'll either be in the middle or we'll be so far away we could do like a 200 meter warp. So I'll get back. Raiding. Here we go. This is for us right here. Uh, when raid probes have been exhausted, they can be purchased from the map interface and we can buy from Galaxia. Never really ran out of raid. Well, the, the reality is, is that if we're uh, raiding in our team of three, each one's going to have 24 raids. <laughs> it's going to be hard to get through all those, the number of systems yeah. you have to get into to get good. Yeah, because we still had like 75 raids between the three of us when we do our three-man raids. Um, wormholes. Fixed an issue where players were unable to warp to their team and fleet members went in wormholes. And players with 10 stacks of wormhole dist distortion not warp to other players or be included in warp groups okay good get them out of there you know they're corporation system corporation fleets uh you can now set target fo focus within corporation fleets focus members will automatically appear at the top of the list added an sos button this button and you will be placed at the top of the friendly fe fleet members overviews that's crucial because now you're about to you know get blown up you can hit sos and all the shield lodges will know target you very very good change yeah that's a handy tool right there that's gonna yeah. save some ships right there that is yeah um they relocated the focus fire button 
and make it easier for gunning officers, gunnery officers, to see and operate, which is good. Um, because sometimes we forget to do that. Reminded me, you know. <laughs> um, number. Yes, beast. <laughs> number of nearby fleet member. Wait, number of nearby fleet members slash total fleet members will be displayed below the fleet button on the HUD. Place a special icon indicating fleet members of the same fleet as you will appear in the upper. Corporation configuration. A new corporation configuration function has been added. The corporation settings can now be transferred to the corporation configuration. I don't even know what I just said. Um, I'll just have to see that as that goes. I'm, I'm a bit lost on that. Corporation compensation. Enhanced the corporation compensation quick purchase function. You can now open corporation compensation. Purchase automatically from the trading post and complete the compensation app. Yeah, that means that when we're running compensation for our fellow pilots that have lost ships, we don't have to go through the convoluted step, go here to get this, go there to get that. It sounds... Oh, that would be so Oh, that would be great. Absolutely. Yes. You just, they need this and we have the funds for it, we can get it for them. That type That's of thing. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, the compensation yeah. will be divided into two steps. The first is to replenish items already in the corporation warehouse and mall items. And the second step is to purchase goods from the trading post. Corporation management can choose whether or not to proceed after this. And now it looks like we can get the goods directly from the trading. Will uh, facilitate the economy too. So I'm all for yeah, I mean, it's a facility. It, 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 it's fortunate that it's beneficial to us, though. Yeah, and it'll you know? make it a lot easier, as you said, to compensate yep. like... facilities the shield armor values of the facilities have been increased overall okay i never really initiated any attacks on the facilities but all right and i've never really seen people do that oh uh, here's what you were talking about the viruses now affect shield values of sovereignty and facilities facilities undergoing deployment upgrading and recovery will now be animated in the star map. yeah that's facilities will display the corporation's holographic logo messages player will now need to be 20 to leave messages on the message board and you can only post one message on a corporation's message board every 30 minutes good so i'll stop spam perfect CEO permissions, uh, the time period for CEOs to be inactive is now two weeks. Uh, so if, if a CEO is, so if I'm inactive for two weeks, it will make like a director CEO. FK CEO, you don't have to. Bonuses. Player names and their corresponding packs will be for point reward claiming entries in the bonus interface good war reports uh optimized the war reports you know to make going worse higher priority which is good they'll clean that tab up optimize it'll be sorted from high to low according to total lossage just basically visualization increased uh, for the war reports. Not crazy there. Development and production. Here's, oh my God. Just thank the Lord. You can now skip the development animation by tapping me to directly view the development results. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I that is like a nightmare going through that thing, man. Yeah, really. It's like you sit there watching your implants be developed for like hours. I'm so happy. <laughs> it's horrible. Wanted it. Oh, oh, that's that's amazing. Good. Yeah. The implant development program has also been changed and upgraded. You can now develop customized implants with fixed attributes. This yeah, I, I like it already. 
they're going to be into the high level of implant stuff. So customization is where I want to go. Eight themes. It's very specific stuff, right? Like I want my to be associated with critical damage. I don't want my velocity to be associated with some defensive thing that you would use. You know, I want my DPS ship the PS oriented implants across the board you know that type of thing it makes mm. sense to do that yeah so it looks like they have all different kinds of attributes and like cool names javelin aeon blaze and focusing on different things so that's pretty cool um players can continue to develop older random implants through their original original development scheme so that means our older ones are still good but it looks like they're making other like video for itself though, so it's a big uh, production. Um, canceling production will return the minerals used. Great. Uh, fixed issue where minimal requirements of all tier one ships were too low. Uh, chat and social functions. Great. Here, this sounds good. Increase the width of information boxes. Looks like bigger translations. Looks like it's getting cleaned up. Big thing with translations, dude, is that they're allowing. Um, if you don't want to have a, a, a chat me, uh, uh, <sighs> Ooh, we can um, set up our own channels now. Too, yeah, which is well, pretty cool. well, you set up your channels for censor. God, LA boy, that word wasn't coming to me. <laughs> <laughs> Censoring. Yeah. I mean, that's great. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, oh yeah, just some good chat. Uh, chat issues, you know, they're, they're fixing where server. Nice quality of life things. Chat channels, uh, nine languages, fleet channel. They added, deleted, deleted the near. Well, you can make a better private channel. Um, blacklist. We can now block players up to 150. Mail system has returned to normal. Thank God. Uh, Cause now we don't see all those stupid characters that were coming up. They fixed the uh, mail system, so that's great. Vanity has been optimized, so now we can probably finally type the word system. Uh, so hopefully they fixed all of the words. Uh, events and stores. Uh, nothing crazy here. Uh, daily login looks like they're gonna do a login event coming up, so just keep logging in, you get rewards. Event modes are gonna be cool, content for more, more stuff. Your optimization space stations, uh, you can talk to NPCs easier, it looks like nothing crazy. Um, Like our config, like our when we're launching our ship, it's easier to see what our ships have uh, for our configurations. That's pretty good. Contraband is on your ship. You'll be asked to confirm. Nice little change. The hangar is going to change. Uh, quality of life stuff here. Nothing crazy to. just they're just informing us of a lot more great quality of life things our changes when our attribute changes uh letting us know when stuff should be equipped will barrel weapons uh, a lot of good stuff and some settings you can now adjust set the volume of music and sound with the slide with the slide and shots looks like they're gonna be better better easier to take screenshots if there's a photo mode it's that's uh, uh re return to baseball uh reports getting research uh, nothing crazy here uh, recruits who are assisting in research and production will now be able to study and expertise that sounds interesting the recruit skill level will be color coded and marked by a tech identifier okay uh, there'll be five kinds of mineral quality maps to be identified. And yeah, so that's pretty much it.
uh, and the, the, the trading post and marriage shop and black market, the sorting order is just getting cleaned up. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's all, all I have. What do you think? Any any thoughts? Any last thoughts? Well, overall, I think it's a major step forward. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of the refinements that made the game clunky, it sounds like they're, in, you know, getting to, you know, clunky administration stuff. So, uh, I mean, I, there's a lot more needs to be done, but this is a step in the right direction. Yeah. There, there, you're at least, you know, all the little problem yeah and i'm especially yeah they solved a lot of problems i'm in particular looking forward to that buff uh the buff stacking that's going to change strategy a whole lot of strategy we're gonna have to do a lot of theory crafting again and diving right in uh to those buffs and debuffs here and then the energy nullification changes are great too so that's that's what i'm looking forward to uh yeah this has just been um we're remnants we're a group uh guys want to know more about us or if you're a new person looking to join i'll put my discord in the link below if you guys follow along with this chat thanks for sticking around uh you know like and subscribe for some more of this stuff uh i'll be doing that i got some more videos coming out uh, a couple of videos now i'm gonna have to change based on these patch notes so that's pretty interesting that they came out right now but uh Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.